by the new advertising law in Nigeria, TV commercials using foreign models and voiceover artists will not be allowed on local television in the country from October this year. Anolale Konfadolako, the man who heads the body regulating advertising in Nigeria, is defending the new law. We have over 200 million faces for models in Nigeria. Each and every one of us, naturally, we are models. Even if we have not chosen that, we have over 200 voices in our country. Are you saying none of those voices is good enough to market a product? That we need to import voice from other countries to market, develop communications that we sell to the Nigerians. The new law has been welcomed by Nigerian voiceover artists. They say it will boost their industry and create more opportunities while protecting local talents. For me and for the association as a whole, uh, it's a welcome development that at last the government is beginning to listen to us and doing the things and going in the right direction. So this now, what it's going to happen that there will be a, a, a thrust up of talents who before now they didn't have a platform to express themselves. So it's going to provide a lot of platforms now. First of all and most importantly it stops capital flight. And what this means is more money or the bulk of it stays here. And once that is in circulation, then you have all sorts of talent to spring up. So it's like a catalyst that will boom the local industry. As of 2020, the size of Nigeria's advertising industry to its GDP was a meager 1% compared to about 7% of South Africa, which has a lower GDP. Advertising practitioners believe the new law will be a game changer for Nigeria's advertising industry. Now, if you look at it, where are the ages? because we have a bigger GDP and a smaller uh, advertising industry compared to South Africa with a smaller GDP, but a larger chunk of that is going into the advertising. It's because of the leakages are coming from some of these things that the federal government apparently is trying to block. So uh, this is a law that will have a far reaching effect in terms of being able to create jobs and empower the uh, local suppliers. The entire local advertising industry appears to be on the same page with the government on this. And buoyed by that, the advertising regulator here says it is going to come down hard on anyone who violates the new law. Deji Badimasi, CGTN, Lagos. If you're a true pro-black, this is what you do. You ban anyone who does not share the same skin color as you you ban any foreign models you ban any foreign teachers you ban any foreign anything and or everything to promote nationality to promote yourself your people your phenotype your history this is what I call real pro-blackism. Salute to Ola Lee Khan for Dolapo. He is the director general of advertising regulatory. So he regulates what is put out to the public, the world. He regulates what's a go, what's a no-go. And what's a no-go are foreign models, foreign voiceovers. Everything from now on, from here on out, is in-house. If you're not Nigerian, you won't get any work in Nigeria. That's what I call tribalism. If you're not from here, you can't be around here. If you not from here, come and visit. That's it. Now, I want to take this a step further. Because I don't believe this was done out of the blue. I believe this was done at a time when the European race is at war with each other. Nigerians, they're looking at their numbers. They're looking at the future. They're saying, well, 
if our calculations is right, we will run the future. So let's start now by promoting ourselves. Might as well do it now. What's going to happen in the future? I salute this. I salute this. I believe this is brilliant. I believe it's right on time. I believe a law did not need to be passed because a law is now passed in Nigeria that there will not be any foreign models, voiceovers, actresses, actors. Now, when I seen people do videos on this story, people automatically assumed just white people. No, not just white people. If you don't share their same culture, not race, culture, they have many different cultures in Nigeria. Black cultures. And if you're not one of the cultures in Nigeria, you can't participate in advertisement. That means black Americans can't participate in Nigerian advertisements because you're not from Nigeria. You're not a part of the culture. You're not a part of the people. You can come and visit. You could spend your tourist dollars. But when it comes to advertising, when it comes to voiceovers, when it comes to acting, you can't do that here. That's for Nigerians only. I personally do not have a problem with that. That is tribalism. That is self-preservation. I do not have a problem with that. Only if other cultures like the black Americans can understand that because you have pro blacks, pro black Americans who talk whitey this, whitey that, but they have white in laws, they have white members in their mink sly groups. That's not a real pro black. You can't sit up here and call these pro blacks here on social media, these pro blacks who's always talking about whitey this, whitey that. They haven't even adopted this policy. You would think if you're a true pro-black, this would be number one. If you talking that whitey this, if you talking that white man that, then you can't have any biracial children. It doesn't matter how jacked up Black America is, or the black race is. If you want to mate, you are going to have to find someone that shares your same skin color. That's not pushed with pro blacks here in America. When you compare pro blacks, their ideology versus what Nigeria is doing, the pro-blacks here in America look fake. You haven't even adopted this. There's a lot of talk about Africans versus black Americans. I don't get into that. I don't care about that. People who indulge in that type of discussion, I believe they have some internal issues, some personal issues, because you're more respectful to white people than you are to your own people. That's a problem. That's a big, big problem. So we can't take you serious about white supremacy, 
the white judicial system, Karens, colorism. We can't take you serious when you haven't even adopted this. The standard of beauty will be Nigerian or a culture within our country. Has to be black. Our models will represent the women of our country. This is common sense. And this also shows how much blacks have been brainwashed. This will never, ever, ever happen in America. Black Americans will never, ever adopt themselves as the standard of beauty. They will always have to put a biracial, a mixed person, a white person. I remember growing up, and if you were mixed, you were cool. Like, oh, yeah, my mom is this and my dad is that. And, oh, you're cool, you're mixed. Or you light-skinned and you dark-skinned. That's hate. That's what I call hate. That's choosing and picking one over the other based on skin color. But this also comes from not having a culture. We as black Americans, we don't have a culture. We don't. Family structure, if you come from a family structure. But you have to promote nationalism. You have to breathe it. You have to live it. You have to teach the youth. You have to teach your children. You have to teach the young. Hey, the way you look, nothing is wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with your skin color. There is nothing wrong with the way you look. You don't need white people to make you popular. You don't need light skin to be light. Because Nigeria is the first black nation. The first black nation to implement a law. Hopefully this falls like dominoes. More black people more black nations fall in line with this ideology. This is how you get things done. This is how you install self-esteem within the people. And it couldn't have came at a better time. You look at what's going on in Europe. Europeans are at war with each other. Vladimir Putin shutting off Nord Stream 1. Shutting off Europe's gas. You hear people say it's going to be a cold winter. Literally, it's going to be a cold winter. Colder than a polar bear's toenails for Europeans. Because Putin is not playing. He's not messing around. And you have people like myself asking, what is the black man's role during this era, this time of war? We don't have any nukes. We don't have a seat at the table. We don't have any diplomats. So... What is our role in this era? In the time that we're in, what is the black man's role? It doesn't matter if he's Nigerian, he's Kenyan, he's black American. It doesn't matter. Even if you're a Negro Pian, it doesn't matter. What is the black man's role during the times that we're in. Not only that, what is the black man's strategy 
during the times that we're in. I dare you. Ask the average black man. It could be your brother. It could be your dad. It could be your nephews. It could be your cousins. It could be your friends or a friend. Ask him, what is your strategy when all hell breaks loose? Many men don't even come up with a plan A or B. They're not going to be able to answer it. That's going to be one of those questions that catches them off guard. But one strategy that is brilliant, even though it doesn't involve fighting, it doesn't even involve a seat at the table, but it's brilliant. Why? Because you don't have to go to war. So you're asking yourself, what is organic talking about? You can sit back as a black man and allow the white race to destroy themselves. That's what you can do. That's a brilliant strategy. Why? Because you don't have to break a sweat and you don't have to get involved. You don't have to be the Solomon Islands. In this case scenario, you can say, well, the Europeans are at war with each other, allow them to blow this MF up. Then, when the coast is clear, when the dust have settled, black men will be back on top. We didn't even have to break a fingernail. And that is the image. I've gotten from what Nigeria has done. I take my hat off to the country of Nigeria. The standard of beauty in Nigeria will no longer be European. This is what you have to do because you're dealing with an image. You can't push an ideology you can't have a movement without an image. People have to know what they're fighting for. And once you tell the country, hey, our models will look like us, male and females. I don't think you even need to make a law. If your people are really about who they are, where they come from, what they look like. You don't even need to make a law. You need to make it a movement. Forget the law. People know that it's right, so they'll get behind it. Knowing that the European race is at war with itself. I was going to say each other, no, itself. So to me, a brilliant strategy is to patiently wait. If you don't have to break a sweat, don't break a sweat. So now, who's next to adopt this policy? Who's next? What African nation, what African country, what African tribe, what African culture will be next in line to adopt this policy? We know damn well Black America will never, ever, 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 ever adopt this policy. It's too Black. It's too Black. <laughs>